page 145. Solving one problem can create another. I look over the top of my sketchbook at Jason's mother standing alone. Before I can ask where Jason is, she opens the door and he comes into the waiting room on his own. He has a new wheelchair with a joystick on the armrest. His fingers circle the joystick and the wheelchair whirs past the front windows across the carpet right up beside me. Wow! I toss my sketchbook on the waiting room couch. How wonderful, Mom says. He never wanted a motorized chair before, Mrs. Morehouse smiles at Mom. But lately, he wants to do lots of things himself. He's even doing his hand exercises again. Jason reddens, flipping open his communication book. And since his birthday is this week weekend, Mrs. Morehouse continues, his father and I knew this would be the perfect present for him. This is cool. I lean close for a good look. How does it work? Jason positions his hand on the joystick and the chair surges a foot forward, then back. Catherine, walk, outside, me too. You want to take a walk outside? I glance at his mother, with me? Take my cell phone. She opens her purse, call here if you need help. The phone number is on those business cards at the reception desk. The receptionist circles the phone number on the card, but even with the number, the cell phone, two blank cards and a pencil in my pocket, I don't feel prepared. What if I can't help him or he needs something and I can't understand him? I hold the door open and on his fourth try, Jason makes the turn around the door frame. All the way down the ramp, I hold my breath, repeating slow, slow in my head like a prayer so he doesn't go too fast and tip or fall. At the bottom of the ramp, I let my breath go in a relief where to? Clusters of people stand near the shops and the brick sidewalks, looking too bumpy and uneven for a wheelchair. I wish I could take Jason to Elliot's Antiques and show him all the bottles and old things, but there's a long flight of stairs and the aisles are too narrow for a wheelchair. Water, Jason taps. You need a drink? Go to water. Between the buildings, waves glitter with sun diamonds. I scan the route for problems. Down the parking lot, watch out for broken tar and the sewer grate. Cross the street, easy. Go to the driveway at Otis's Hardware and use the little ramp to the curb. A sharp turn. Down the sidewalk in front of Coastal Marine Supply. Looks good from here. After that, smooth paths run all the way through the waterfront park, home free. I glance back to the clinic. Mom and Mrs. Morehouse wave from the window. Okay, but we can't stay long. Your mom will be mad if you miss speech. Whatever, speech. I walk beside his wheelchair and imitate the speech woman. Well, Jason, I guess your day sink the... Footsteps pound behind us and two women jog by, one on each side of Jason and me. One of the women gives Jason a soft-eyed pity look. Watching the soles of their sneakers running away, I push my hands into my pockets, touching my pencil, the business card, and the flat-topped bottoms buttons of Jason's mother's cell phone. Maybe I shouldn't have agreed to go so far. As we reach the crosswalk, a car stops for us. I stare at the curls of the hair on the back of Jason's neck as we cross the street. An old couple stands at the curb, the woman hunting for something in her purse. Excuse me, I say, we need the ramp. Oh, sorry, the man glances at Jason's legs. They move on, the woman still searching her purse. I walk ahead on the sidewalk, kicking away pine cones and rocks and sticks so his chair won't get stuck on them. When I turn back, Jason's coming up behind me, his fingers resting in sharp angles on his communication book, his eyes fixed on the water. It's beautiful, isn't it, I say. He nods. More than. Awesome. What? What word means more than awesome? 
Yes. Looking across the sun dazzled waves, I have no word. I think after awesome, you're done with words. Make card more than words. Even though we're blocking the sidewalk and people have to step on the grass to go around us, I take a blank card from my pocket and write more than words across the top. Searching for something to draw, not even the ocean seems enough. No, picture. In his book, the card stands out against the others. I've made it plain as a field of new stone. You're right, I say. This way, it can be anything you imagine. The air smells fishy, a green, brown, deep water smell. I choose the path winding along the shore, leading to a row of red painted benches facing the ocean. Down the shoreline, a fishing boat pulls up to the dock at a, the seafood restaurant, and a man in a long white apron rushes down the gangplank to meet the boat. Side by side, Jason and I take up the whole path. A girl bumps my arm, rushing past us, walking two black poodles. Sorry, she says over her shoulder. I whisper to Jason, she's late for the dog show. Jason flashes me a grin. Maybe that bench by the wharf? Usually I love listening to the pilings, creaking, purring boat motors, and the sharp piao of gulls. But today my ears are full of the sound of Jason's wheelchair and the silence of people who suddenly stop talking as we pass. A man meets my gaze. He smiles, but I can only nod back, unable to let go of the clench of my teeth. At the long town wharf, the seagull stands on two legs, facing the wind, shaking his feathers dry. He reaches around to preen his wing as a group of preschoolers leans over the wharf railing, railing, dropping rocks off his eyes. I hear snatches of voices as we come closer to the wharf. You don't need this, but if it'll make you feel better, reaching down, a girl puts a bandage on a little boy's elbow. Her head is bowed. Her head is bowed, but I know her hair, parted on the side, a strand separate from having been twirled. I fall to one knee on the path and dip my head to peer between the slap, slats of the empty bench. Was that boy in an accident? The child says, pointing at Jason. Did he get hurt? I watch Christy, startled, looking at Jason. She turns away quickly and touches her index finger to the child's lips. Shh! It's not polite to talk about people. Jason backs his wheelchair up the path toward me, and I lean so his chair is between Christy and me. He stops struggling to look over his shoulder at me. I'm coming, I say. He taps, but I can't see his communication book from the ground, and I'm too scared to stand up. My shoelace is tied, but I hold the loops in my fingers, knowing when I let go, I'll have to do something. Why can't I just stand up and say, hi, Christy? Okay, grab your partner's hand, everyone, a woman yells. Time to get back to the bus. I peek, enough to see Christy take her child's hand. She follows the line of children, stuffing bandage wrappers in a short pocket. I stand slowly. I'm all set. At the empty bench closest to the wharf, I sit on the very edge of the wooden seat and watch Christy growing tinier the farther she walks down the pathway. Jason taps, and I tear my focus away from Christy, passing the last streetlight at the edge of the park. Catherine, pretty today. I nod. It's a very pretty day. Jason touches my arm. Catherine, pretty. My neck feels prickly. I rub it. Looking down to a throw of seaweed, puts a rope and a broken lobster trap caught between huge rocks at the water's edge. What does he mean? Is he being nice or telling me he likes me? When things get confusing, make a joke. No, I cross my eyes at him. I'm a dwarf. Jason does not smile. We should get back. Speech woman will be coming out to get you. But Jason doesn't circle his fingers on the joystick. He turns to a new page in his communication book. My birthday party. Do you want to come? 
the cards sit alone on the page, new and homemade. My birthday party has red and blue balloons and a chocolate brown cake. I don't know why, but I feel jealous that his mom made him nicer cards than usual. But that feeling mixes with sadness that he had to ask her to make these words so he could invite me to his party. I tell myself it's a simple invitation to a birthday party, not a date. Sure, when's your party? Saturday. My breath catches. This Saturday? Jason nods. It's good? Yeah, it's great. No problem at all. Walking back to the clinic, a woman reading on the grass stares over the top of her book at Jason. I stare back. Even though I told Jason it was great that his party is Saturday, it's more than great. It solves everything. Almost.